in the memory of late Mrs. Alka Hemant Patil. We are glad to present our audio articles for inspiring disabled persons to achieve greater heights in their career. Under the project of Client Service Department of National Association for the Blind, India, to empower the disabled in tribal, rural and semi-urban areas of our country. K. Ramakrishnan Student of Econometrics Bombay University Call it heredity or call it talent, Ramakrishnan is brilliant mathematician like his grandfather, with whom he lived as a little boy in Trichnapoli. Even in his school and college days he studied mathematics from books outside the prescribed texts, not for the sake of getting a higher percentage, but purely for personal satisfaction. Recently he was appointed a temporary lecturer in mathematics at Khalsa College, Bombay and at the same time he is completing the senior year of his MA with Maths and Economics as his subjects, probably the first ever blind person in India to do so. He has been awarded the National Merit Scholarship from the University Grants Commission to pursue his studies. He solves all his mathematical problems mentally and Kala Rao, a math student herself, on the draws the diagrams blackboard when required, AC according to his instructions. A good friend of many years, she is his regular reader and writes for his examinations. Later, Ramakrishnan plans to go in for mathematical research. Another goal of his is to enter the Indian Economic Service which formulates the government's economic policies. He is very bitter that he was not allowed to sit for the IAS examination solely because of his blindness. Ramakrishnan excels in other things too. He is a very good singer of Hindustani and Carnatic light classical music, specializing in Bhavgeet. He can sing in several Indian languages. During his college days, he had formed his own music group and Ramu and his friends were in great demand giving nearly five performances a week, often outside. Bombay too. It was also a good source of income, but because of his greater interest in maths, it had to be dropped. Another thing Ramakrishnan was good at cricket. As long as he had vision left in one eye, he played for leagues up to the district level and if he could have continued playing, he feels sure he would have made a good test cricketer. Born with cataracts in his eyes and operated four times, he lost sight in both eyes when he was 13. After that he left his school, the People's Welfare Society School, Bombay, where he had been a first-class student throughout. For four years he did nothing, it was Mrs. Ramut Fajel Bhoi, Development Officer of the National Association for the Blind, who not only persuaded his family to let him continue studying but also prevailed on the principal of his old school to take him back. Luckily the vision in his right eye improved considerably, following some Ayurvedic treatment only to be totally lost again after the completion of his BA from St. Xavier's College with a first class in economics and statistics. Very few blind people are good in maths, says Ramakrishnan, chiefly because the teaching methods are outmoded and unsatisfactory. The available aids and appliance are grossly inadequate and even these are not fully exploited. He is eager to offer his services free, but nobody has asked him so far. Any takers now? He was a first blind person appearing and clearing at Jamnalal Bajaj Institute for Masters in Business Administration. Miss Geeta was his guide and she herself was a professor of mathematics, hence she could match with the need of the Ramkrish to study mathematics and economics. A intimate relationship with them developed amongst them and slowly it resulted into the marriage. A group of honorary secretaries of NAB India was very much impressed with the performance of Ramkrishna and they had tried to place in Industrial Development Bank of India, IDBI. Due to the efforts he is appointed as a general manager. To meet the requirement of job he had to be friendly with the computer. Geeta helped him in it. He was successfully able to access the technology and due to this he got national fame. He served the IDBI till his retirement and thereafter he was elected as an honorary D. Rangraj Proprietor 
Intermos Department Store, Bangalore. Rangaraz is an angry young man. All talk of helping the handicapped is just so much hot air, he says, which eventually boils down to nothing more tangible than stereotyped expressions of pity or sympathy. I don't want pity. I hate it. We can look after ourselves if given the chance, but then nobody gives us the chance. Born in Hyderabad, tall, good-looking Rangaraj is the son of a retired, senior government official of Karnataka. The first blind student to get an MA in English Literature from Bangalore University, what he wanted was a teaching assignment. He loves the English language, reads a lot, is a member of the National Library for the Blind, London, and listens into the BBC with unfailing regularity. So it was disappointing indeed, when all he could get was a temporary appointment at a Bangalore school and later on a one-year vacancy at Providence College, Kunhul, in 1974. After that the only offer he got was to teach music in the school for the blind, Mysore. His second love was radio broadcasting which has always fascinated him. Even here he met with total rejection. He tried to approach the men at the top ministers, a vice-chancellor, even an ex-president though they were full of kind words and promises, the promises which initially filled him with hope, never materialized. Bitterly hurt by these reverses, he determined to strike on his own, with the encouragement of his wife Pramila, a professor of economics at the Kunur College, who had given up teaching to marry him. With a loan of Rs 20 from the State Bank and the active assistance of Mrs. Ratna Rao, social worker of Bangalore, the couple opened a department store in Tumos in Indira Nagar in the house where they live. The store is now about nine months old with a daily turnover of about 100 rupees which they hope will increase substantially once they get established. Rangaraz has trained himself to manage the shop single-handed, whilst his wife looks after the household chores and gives help when needed. As a retailer he goes on his own to buy goods from the wholesale market. In the shop, he knows exactly where everything is stacked on the shelves. He weighs the articles when necessary, receives the cash, and does the accounts on a braille typewriter. Where the common concerned, he is happy to say that he has never been cheated by customers. Many of them often try to test him by holding out currency notes and asking him to identify them. Many go so far as to voice an open suspicion that his blindness is not genuine. While this is amusing, no doubt, at the same time it is sad indeed that few are willing to accept the fact that a blind man can do just as well as the next one. Dr. Farid Syed Abdul Salam Project Assistant, Central Institute of Indian Languages Mysore Life was just an endless series of unsurmountable obstacles, or so it seemed to young Farid Syed Abdul Salam, at that time. Five years after his birth in 1940, his father died, and his mother giving way to excessive grief became deaf through beating her head against a wall. Then in 1953 Farid lost his sight due to retinitis pigmentosa. His family refused to accept his blindness and passed him off as a person with defective vision. Zealously overprotected, he was even stopped from continuing his education after leaving school in 1957. For seven years Farid sat at home, having nothing to do, nowhere to go. The seven years, says Farid, seemed like seven decades. He felt old, useless and miserable. When he could stand it no more, he went to live with a friend, far away from his home. His meeting with E. Joseph, a blind student, was a revelation to him. For the first time he accepted his blindness and resolved studies. Graduating in political science in 1968, he completed his MA with linguistics in 1970, both in the first division. He was awarded a merit scholarship by the University of Kerala and a national merit scholarship by the Government of India. The Goethe Institute of the Federal Republic of Germany awarded him a stipend for German language, studied in Berlin. Next, with the assistance of a junior research fellowship from the University Grants Commission, 
Farid prepared a thesis under the renowned grammarian professor Ashok Kelkar Kanyakumari Muslim Tamil Descriptive Analysis, which won for him a PhD degree from Pune University. In 1974, he was appointed as project assistant by the Central Institute of Indian Languages, Mysore. At present, he is deputed to the Government of Maharashtra Education Department to work in the Instructional Materials Production Project at the State Institute of Education, Pune. His job is to prepare a grammar, a special textbook, and a teacher's manual in tribal language called Kolmi, spoken in the Yeotmal district of Maharashtra. The aim of the project is to make education possible for the tribal children by teaching them Marathi through their mother tongue during the first three years of primary school. Farid is now happy and well-adjusted to life, with the help of Gracie, his educated, sighted, Christian wife, whom he married against his family's wishes, refusing to wed a girl who was an illiterate, distant poor relation. In Gracie he found a girl who loved him and shared mutual interests. They are very happy together with their little son Nishad. His own experiences made Farid eager to help the blind. In 1967, along with E, V, Joseph and four other blind friends, Farid started the Blind Association of Trivandrum which ration of the blind. Farid served later grew into the Kerala Federation as its treasurer and later on as its general secretary. He attended the Colombo Convention, 1969, and the Berlin Convention, 1974, of the International Federation of the Blind. It was a blind man who first showed him the way. In his turn, Farid is eager to guide other blind people on the road to success and fulfillment. X. Lieutenant J. K. Sengupta. Agent. Indian Cooking Gas, Siliguri. The year 1965. The Indo Park Confrontation. The 16th Light Cavalry Armored Corps formed the advance guard of the armored thrust into Sialkot. Both the opposing forces were the Lahore arranged along Sialkot railway line. It was towards the end of the war. The fighting had died down. Apart from sporadic artillery shelling and an occasional air attack, there was little activity. Lieutenant J. K. Sengupta, tank troop leader, had positioned his tanks fairly forward to keep the enemy under observation. Suddenly a chance shot hit his tank, bored a hole in the plating and a spray of shrapnel flew in his direction, penetrating his eyes and leaving him permanently blinded. The military career of young Jayanta Kumar ended almost before it had begun since that day three years ago, when he had been duly commissioned into the 16th Light Cavalry Armoured Corps after passing out from the Indian Military Academy, they had are done. For the treatment of his injuries, he was sent by the government to the USA and on his way back he obtained permission to attend a six-week training course at St. Dunstan's, Brighton, England, a home for the war-blinded of the two world wars. Sengupta recalls with affection the warmth, hospitality and friendship shown him there. In 1967, Shortly after being released from the army, Sengupta was appointed a stockist of the Tata Oil Mills Co. Limited, Calcutta, through the good offices of the late Colonel L. S. Sane who was then a director of that company. Colonel Sane also extended to him a very large credit facility which made Zenta Enterprises a viable concern. He further secured financial assist from the West Bengal government, the Javans Welfare Association, Bombay and the United Bank, in the form of loans. In 1972, the Government of India decided to award dealerships of the Indian Oil Corporation to ex-servicemen. Under this scheme, Sengupta was given the distributorship of Indian domestic cooking gas in the North Bengal town of Siliguri. Today he is running both agencies successfully, thanks, he says, to the help he receives from everybody. Both his parents are actively engaged in running the business, he has a small but devoted staff whom he can rely upon even in his absence, and he gets the fullest cooperation. From his principles and from financial institutions, he points out that the products he deals in are well-established, nationally known brands, 
so there is no risk factor. Whatever success I have met with ESAs has not been due in any way to my individual effort or enterprise. I have been the beneficiary of a lot of help from other people and I am certain that if other blind persons had been afforded opportunities, they would have similar made as much or even more of them. But that is as it should be. Surely the least that anyone can do is to extend all possible help to one who has risked his life and lost his sight in the defense of his country. Kanti and Shanti Shah NAB Regional Braille Press Bombay Sixty years ago, identical twins were born to a wealthy family in Rajpipla. They had a happy, carefree childhood, traveling a great deal with their father, who was then the head of the revenue department of that state. Little did they know what was to come. At the age of 14 Shanti gradually started losing vision due to detachment of the retina, soon followed by his brother Kanti and both became totally blind by the time they were 20. They were forced to give up their education but studied Braille at the Baroda School for the Blind and through an intensive program of self-study mastered English, Hindi and Gujarati. With the help of books, periodicals, and reading material sent by their brother from the United States, they built up an extensive Braille library, from which they loaned books to all parts of India for other blind people to read. They also started teaching Braille through postal correspondence to anyone who was interested. In 1947 they started their own magazine Deepak in Hindi and Gujarati, perhaps the first Braille magazine to be published ed in India. It was printed on a hand-operating machine and they were able to produce about 500 copies on a duplicator. Later on Deepak as well as their carefully built-up library were presented by them to the Blind Mains Association, Bombay, of which both are founder members. They came to Bombay when Dr. R. T. Vyas asked them to run the regional Braille Press, one of the four set up in India. They accepted the offer with misgivings but with experiment and experience the intelligent twins soon gained the requisite know-how. Kanti is the manager, Shanti does the proofreading and they both attend personally to all the correspondence. Housed in an old disused garage, the press turns out textbooks, dictionaries, the Bhagavad Gita, books on national culture, books with raised illustrations on thermoform using special braille on paper, and it is the only braille press in India to have produced an atlas with tactile illustrations of maps and diagrams. Kanti and Shanti tackle all difficulties with confidence. For instance, they experimented and found aluminium to be a good substitute for zinc plates which were proving too costly. For the same reason they conscientiously went from shop to shop hunting for the cheapest good quality paper. This is just a measure of their devotion to their work. They are both equally interested in blind welfare. Both are executive members of NAB and both have attended conferences and meetings as delegates. Without doubt they have made their lives a success. Gentle and unassuming, the cheerful, friendly twins from Rajpipla have proved that blindness need not be the end of the world. Hemant J. Patil Honorary Secretary National Association for the Blind, India